The relationship between the hyperscaler giants and the telco community has strengthened significantly during the past couple of years, as has the communications networking focus of the cloud platform players. And to find out more, I'm talking today with Martin Lund, who is Corporate Vice President of Azure for Operators at Microsoft and the former CEO of Metaswitch. So Martin, good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. So uh, let's start by finding out if you're heading to MWC this year. Absolutely. It is, uh, we are looking forward to uh, going there uh, with, with, a, with a nice new logo on our back. And uh, it, should be, it should be great. We actually have a long list of customers that we're meeting up with. Looks like it's, it's happening this year, fingers crossed. Now, as one of the key leaders of the initiative, can you just give us an overview of Azure for Operators? Yeah, the Azure for Operators is really um, it's really an expression of the, the, the realization that Microsoft have had for, for uh, several years that the the power of the cloud really needs to be uh, need to be applied to the to the telco sector. Uh, Microsoft have uh, had a number of partnerships with telcos over the years, uh, but they also realized that in order to really bring out the value, they had to have a telco DNA on the board and they acquired two companies, MetaSwitch Networks and Affirm Networks, uh, uh, to really to accelerate that initiative called Azure for Operators. And I'm, I'm part of uh, that organization uh, running the, the, the product functions of the former Affirm and MetaSwitch and really, Taking uh, these cloud-native technologies, uh, disruptive technologies, and and accelerating uh, the, the journey to the cloud using best-in-class technology. Now, as well as the product sets of those uh, acquisitions, Azure for Operators made a real splash with a, a, a really big announcement with AT and T. Can you tell us more about your AT and T engagement? Uh, that was an industry first, wasn't it? Well, absolutely. I think uh, the AT and T. Uh, had, had been in the in the business of cloudifying their their business and virtualizing their network function was a leader. They remember in uh, I think it was 2014 they announced Domain 2.0. Uh, Microsoft uh, uh, was not together with them at the stage at that time, but MetaSwitch uh, was uh, and and was. Uh, part of this early wave of really taking network function, virtualizing it. Now we've come a long way since then, and, and now it's of course not just VNF, it's CNFs. Uh, but but AT and T have been in 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 really a pioneer driving this uh, this push to virtualizing network function and running them in 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 the cloud. What we did was, uh, and what the in the partnership with AT and T was to realize that they are not necessarily wanting to be a cloud operator and dealing with all the aspects of running a small cloud. Instead, they want to focus on delivering their best-in-class services to their customers. So what we have done is we've taken, uh, in partnership with them, core technology that is used to run their network, uh, the, the, the basically the telco cloud layer, um, and, and moving that under the uh, umbrella. And what it does is accelerate essentially the hybrid cloud uh, movement that allows you to run certain things run on-prem and certain things can then also run in the cloud. And that, that continuum between the two is super uh, strategic and important. And what's important uh, also is that this is proven technology. It's running today. There are tens and tens and tens of vendors that have ported their network functions onto the cloud operating Tens and millions, and, and 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 maybe even close to 100 million subscribers is running on that platform today, and and what we're doing is accelerating the hybrid aspect of that, so you can really go from the hybrid environment to from the on-prem environment, and 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 migrate workloads into the cloud, maintaining uh, the same security posture and and reliability posture as you would expect for telco grade uh, solutions. Okay, so this is a, a real classic example of the telco hyperscaler relationship. Um, now, in terms of uh, Azure for operators, uh, what kind of specific offerings are you now bringing to the market? We were about to announce some some things in Mobile Congress, so uh, some of those uh, you will have to wait a few more days before we we unveil those. But in general, you you can see us 
of, of taking uh, our existing customers, their solutions that they're running and accelerating their journey to the cloud. It is a journey. It's not happening overnight. We're not uh, firing up uh, uh, things and say, say, just drop what you have and, and use our solution. That's not how it works. Uh, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey. Uh, it's complex networks. All telco networks today are multi-vendor. Uh, I, I've never met a customer that have not more than that have only one vendor in their network. Of course, there, there are many vendors, complex networks, and uh, our, our customers uh, uh, are supporting tens of millions of of of, uh, of end customers, consumers, and enterprises. It's it's truly mission critical. So that journey will take time. What we're announcing is the steps along the way that, that allows you to get there faster, better, cheaper, to really uh, leverage the power of, of the, the cloud uh, without losing control and when maintaining uh, the reliability that is needed for, for telco networks. And so obviously, you know, Azure is not the only hyperscaler out there working with the telco community. How is what you are doing different from what the other hyperscalers are doing? One thing that's different is that we have uh, a couple of thousand of telco uh, engineers uh, or people that worked in telco with telco DNA that understands what telco grade means, that built products for telco. Uh, so if you just think of average tenure, maybe 10, 15 years, that's a massive amount of knowledge and know-how. Uh, and a customer base that, that is different than what some of our colleagues that are coming more from an IT perspective and saying the IT mindset, we can migrate that in, into the telco. I think we understand that being in the telco for a little bit is that uh, telco networks are not the same as IT networks. There, there are some important differences. Okay. And now looking ahead, uh, what do you think will be the major trends impacting hyperscalers and the telecom sector in the coming years? I mean, for example, do you think private 5G is going to be uh, as big a deal as a lot of people think? Yes, I actually do. I'm, I'm passionate about that. And I think one of the trends we're seeing is, is the, the 5G as a macro, you know, uh, initiative is unlocking a, a lot of opportunities and use cases. Private 5G is is serving some of those use cases that have specific needs for data locality data can't leave uh, maybe the premise for security or privacy or regulatory reasons. Uh, it can be that uh, the latency domain are simply uh, so short uh, that you have to have a, a, a local controller. And it can be, which the, one of the first one will be backhaul, uh, just backhauling enough bandwidth from your hundreds of 4K cameras may not be feasible or economically, so it makes sense to have a, a do your video, video analytics on-prem and only send some of the pre-processed data up to the cloud. So there are a large amount of use cases that we see for private that justifies a, 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 a local uh, 5G core and compute. That doesn't mean that the, the operators and the telcos don't have a role to play because they still they have spectrum. And in, in many ways, they, they can be a, a great channel for, for selling into enterprises that have those needs. And at the same time, offer services for uh, other use cases. 5G can be a nationwide coverage for uh, automotive industry, for example. That is, that is a form of a private uh, network that is that is nationwide, and you can also think of some that are international in nature. So the use cases are for private and for, for sort of for macro private is uh, it, are just you know, starting to unfold right now. So I'm very passionate about that. And if you up-level it up, of course, there's a lot of hype around 5G, uh, and, and we're probably going through it where, so where's the use cases? I'm confident uh, that as once we roll out the technology, uh, this will be absolutely uh, a massive, massive enabler for, for more innovation in, in industries uh, across all sectors. The other thing that is, so 5, 5G, private 5G obviously is, is you know, um, <clears throat> gonna be 
a hot topic, and we'll see a lot of announcements, I think, in Mobile Congress. In general, there's other things, which is just the whole notion of enabling uh, and, and, and unleashing the power of the, of the hyperscalers and, and, and allowing telcos to really take advantage of that. Bring on new services, uh, it's more tightly integrating with with a with a with a cloud stack to bring new services to market. I think it, it becomes evident uh, that that is right ahead of us. Uh, now, different operators will be at different parts of that journey, uh, but you know, look at look at the, the technology like uh, Teams. Teams is a cloud powered solution. Zoom is there. These are unified communication solutions that are operating at a massive, massive global scale, and that can only be uh, fueled by, um, by 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 cloud technologies, hyperscale technologies. You'll see more of that. We'll see more advanced versions of that with, um, with maybe beginnings of augmented reality solutions showing up, um, smart glasses, etc. So I think there's a whole long list of, of super exciting things. But the year we're looking at right now is about building the foundation to enable you know, those new use cases and allowing the operators to participate in that brave new world. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're just seeing the, the tip of the iceberg of what a combination of cloud and communications networking can deliver to the world. And who knows, maybe MWC 2030 might even exist in the metaverse rather than Barcelona. We'll just have to wait and see. Martin, thanks very much for joining us today. Great to talk to you and hopefully see you in Barcelona. That's good. Thank you so much.